I know, trucks, SUVs, and crossovers are all the rage right now. But don't forget about the car, especially one like this from Buick, where quiet luxury rolls along in an elegantly conceived package. Buick's bold move to discontinue their best-selling car opens the door for their largest sedan to take the spotlight. The all-new 2017 LaCrosse taps into the brand's past with the return of the three-color tri-shield insignia and a grille inspired by their 1954 concept car. Longer, lower, and wider, there's a sexiness to this design that the LaCrosse has been missing, beautifully blending Buick history with modern technique. The extra-charged white frost tri-coat and optional 20-inch wheels elevate the look even further. It would have been nice, though, if Buick had matched the HID headlamps with something other than these yellowish fog lamps. The LaCrosse may still entice a more mature audience, but it no longer repels a youthful one either. Always a quiet customer with a pillow-soft ride, the LaCrosse advances those characteristics while also adding a layer of drivability that improves the car and driver connection. A new 5-link rear geometry imbues more vivacious handling with flatter cornering, and the optional dynamic drive package adds the must-have hyperstruts and active suspension system with sport mode. Priced at $1,625, it includes the 20-inch all-seasons and is a box you should not leave unchecked. If you appreciate a sophisticated ride quality and heightened level of handling performance, this is the mandatory setup. Fuel economy improves from 21 mpg to 25 in combined driving thanks to the confluence of lower weight, a new 8-speed automatic, and the second generation of GM's ubiquitous 3.6-liter V6 featuring cylinder deactivation and stop-start technology. It produces 305 horsepower and 268 pound-feet of torque, providing the LaCrosse with lively acceleration without any tugging of the steering wheel. The LaCrosse harkens back to a time when driving a big Buick was emblematic of a lifetime worth of success. As such, its simplistic cabin layout is both refreshing and necessary considering the older demographic it attracts. But while it drives with all of the pleasing softness and hushed quietness you could want, GM engineered out the residual floatiness, resulting in a car which handles with more precision, steers with more acuity, and yet preserves the best luxury sedan attributes of the LaCrosse. So yes, it's a better drive. And other than a few ergonomic hiccups, this is a stylish Buick you can embrace. Those missteps include the misfit shifter that tends to resist reverse and a handful of controls hidden by the steering wheel, such as the start-stop button on the right and the lighting controls on the left. Otherwise, the IntelliLink system is excellent and includes the oft-advertised OnStar with a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, allowing a high-speed connection to download more apps to the unit. You can use the Buick interface with all of its goodies or project your smartphone onto the touchscreen. Either way, it's one of the leading infotainment systems for ease of use. This top trim LaCrosse Premium is loaded with high-end features such as massaging front seats, a heated steering wheel, and a highly configurable driver information display. The front seat bottoms are flatter and wider for easier ingress, yet still provide enough lateral support to accompany the upgraded handling. In the back, space is not an issue with its large mid-size dimensions, but this trim should include a USB port, heated seats, and sunshade back here. It does not. But as a reminder, if you leave something or someone in the back seat, the LaCrosse lets you know. Other advanced safety features include adaptive cruise control, pedestrian detection, and automatic braking, all of which you can visually monitor on the large, bright head-up display. Plus, the vibrating safety seat directionally alerts you to impending dangers. It can park itself in both parallel and perpendicular situations, comes with remote start, and wireless phone charging. There's even a teen driver feature allowing parents to set boundaries. The complete package is strong, yet the design is a little too rudimentary for me, and I think it's high time for someone to design GM a new steering wheel. It just doesn't look nor feel quite as premium as a $47,445 luxury car should. 
Gently push on this emblem and the trunk lid opens to 15 cubic feet of cargo volume, about the same as in a Honda Accord, and it can be expanded into the rear seats. Starting at around 33,000 and also available with all-wheel drive, the new LaCrosse is a positive advancement for Buick, both in terms of styling and drivability. It's the big American sedan you forgot you ever wanted. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes. You want to know a secret? I don't really love driving anymore. Now, don't get me wrong, in the right car on the right road, it's still a favorite pastime of mine, but more often than not, a monkey could do the kind of driving I face. Crawl, brake, repeat. So I am all in on the future of autonomous. And Cadillac Super Cruise is the closest thing yet I've experienced to a self-driving car. Two years ago, I tested the first CT6, Cadillac's large flagship sedan priced anywhere from the mid-50s to nearly $90,000. It wasn't all that I thought it would be, and in that regard, my opinion hasn't changed much this week. My biggest complaint? The sport tune ride quality, that despite the magnetic ride control shocks, never gets soft and luxurious enough. Now, I appreciate the elegant, understated appearance and the amazing rear seat accoutrements, but this CT6 has an ace in the hole that makes every other feature a secondary story. It's called Super Cruise, and it's available on the premium luxury trim as an optional $5,000 package and standard on this range-topping platinum trim. I've shown you a bunch of cars in varying price ranges with semi-autonomous features, including ones that allow you to take your hands off the wheel momentarily while the car keeps itself in the lane and maintains a set speed and safe distance from the car in front. But having to touch the wheel every few seconds is a drag, and some of these cars are better than others at keeping the car from zigzagging between the lines. But this Super Cruise feature is more advanced, utilizing LiDAR, a radar-like system that employs laser light to measure distance to a target, map data, cameras, sensors, and GPS. Though Cadillac believes they can eventually expand its use to rural and other more complicated roads, for now, Super Cruise only operates in specific conditions. So Super Cruise only works on limited access highways, meaning no cross streets, just exit ramps and the car will determine where it will work, not you. So you've gotta be in the driver's seat and paying attention, of course. This camera right here makes certain of that. And if you don't, you'll be warned first visually, and then eventually audibly. And if you're stubborn enough, the car will actually pull over and call OnStar coming to a complete stop. Okay, so just like a regular cruise control system, you're going to wanna set your speed, make sure the car is centered in its lane, and then press the Super Cruise button. This lights up green right here, telling you the system is ready to go. And now you are doing hands-free driving, completely relaxed, allowing you to enjoy your environment. I absolutely love it. It doesn't make me nervous at all. The only bummer is that unlike in the Mercedes models I've tested, it doesn't change lanes for you. You still have to do that. This is the future, so embrace it. And frankly, with our country's outdated and overused infrastructure, it's technology like this that will alleviate some of the horrendous congestion. The system does a wonderful job of keeping the car centered in its lane, unlike some other systems I've tested. Now right here, I'm gonna make a lane change. I'm now over into the center lane. It goes blue right here in the meanwhile. Once it goes back to green, once the car is centered in its lane, you're ready to go back to the hands-free driving. This fully loaded CT6 with all-wheel drive, the 404 horsepower twin turbo V6 and platinum level features checks in at 89,290, a breathtaking price. Paired with an eight-speed auto, it's not the smoothest power delivery. Again, it seems as though Cadillac baked in an unnecessary level of sportiness here that really doesn't satisfy or belong. Rear wheel steering aids in low speed maneuverability and high speed stability. There's a sound enhancer for more engine in the cabin and 400 pound feet of torque on demand. But for me, 
I'll take one of the rear seats. My previous CT6 test drive wasn't of an Ultimate model, so it didn't have these luxurious, power-operated, massaging, heated and cooled rear seats, nor did it have this dual-screen entertainment system. And frankly, I'd rather be back here than in the driver's seat. The massage is excellent in all seating positions, and there's a lot of good tech in here, like the rear-view camera mirror, configurable displays, and super easy to use infotainment with wide ranging connectivity. There's also a nicely placed wireless charging pad, but FYI, it is not compatible with iPhone 8. And the 34 speaker Bose Panaray sound system is spectacularly immersive. Super Cruise is an amazing step along the fully autonomous path, and GM will eventually expand its use to all of their vehicles, but it's going to take some time. The CT6 itself doesn't feel nearly as special, at least not at this price. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes. Cadillac's transformation continues to bring the brand into the 21st century with a heavy dose of style and technology. This is the all-new XTS. Sometimes I can tell if I'm going to like a car within the first few minutes of driving it. This isn't one of those times. No, it takes some relationship building to get comfortable with the XTS. But after a week, it started to feel like a good friend. The XTS replaces the DTS in Cadillac's lineup, earning it the flagship designation, at least until something rear-wheel drive and V8 powered comes along. You can have it in front or all-wheel drive with GM's ubiquitous 3.6-liter V6. It's a full-size all right with an 18 cubic foot trunk that would make your grandpa proud. Its 104 cubic feet of passenger volume is just a little bigger than that of a Honda Accord, so there's kickback and relaxed room aplenty. Beyond its ample size, the XTS has a provocative presence with a well-proportioned body and tantalizing lighting effects, most evident at night when the judicious use of bright white LEDs makes the greatest impression. It exudes Cadillac's head-turning style, but with a welcome air of gracefulness. The interior craftsmanship, layout, and leading-edge technology highlight the best work GM has ever done inside a car. It easily rivals those of vehicles costing thousands more. Designers must have toiled endlessly to get it just right, sweating each and every detail, and it shows. But if you think my Ford Touch is intimidating, just wait till you see the new Cadillac user experience, aka Q. Its breadth of connectivity and haptic feedback touchscreen are oh wow moments reminiscent of a Disney vision of the future. The fully customizable gauge cluster is perhaps the most impressive, as you can rearrange a plethora of items around the digital screen right from the steering wheel. As a technology lover, I'm all in on the Q concept but I can't imagine the typical 70-year-old man is going to have any clue as to what's going on in here. It's as if Cadillac is shoving its older customer base right out the door. On top of that, the big steering wheel button used to activate a number of features is very difficult to push, and the lack of knobs and switches on the center console can sometimes be exasperating. It's not easy to learn, and it's going to take about a week before you start to feel comfortable. Now, as for the drive itself, the XTS uses magnetic ride control shocks, rear air springs, and a Haldex all-wheel drive system with a limited slip that blend a sophisticated luxury sedan ride with astute big car handling. Riding on standard 19-inch wheels, the XTS feels like it's overreaching in its athleticism by just a bit. When I drive a big caddy, I want to feel even more isolation from the road, and I would certainly trade a little of this car's swiftness for more sumptuousness. The 304 horsepower V6 and six-speed auto feel up to the task, providing expeditious acceleration and powertrain smoothness for the masses, though some will undoubtedly lament the absence of big V8 power. It does keep the gas mileage in check at 17 City, 26 Highway, and does so on regular unleaded. This XTS all-wheel drive premium collection with the optional UltraView sunroof stickers for $58,180. Very attractive considering the multitude of cutting-edge convenience, 
comfort, and safety features that Cadillac stocks here. The complete array is unparalleled at this price. But the XTS risks alienating its segment shoppers by charging too hard with technology and not going soft enough on the ride. For Drive Time on Yahoo Autos, I'm Steve Hammes. Diesel, wagon, stick shift, all terms that tend to scare off American car shoppers. But GM isn't convinced that they can't make them work. They're determined to offer variety, and this new Chevy Cruze hatchback is the perfect example. The Cruze is one of the best compact sedans you can buy, and now Chevy gives you a more versatile choice. Wagon, hatchback, call it what you will. But this cruise boasts over 47 cubic feet of cargo room. That's just shy of the volume found in the Trax SUV. And when the seats are left up, there's far greater room in here. So for those of you who aren't into the crossover SUV thing, these little wagons are pretty remarkable in what they can hold. The only knock is that Chevy put zero innovation back here. No grocery bag hooks or any other kind of cleverness. At a svelte 2,978 pounds for this top premier trim, the hatch actually weighs less than the sedan, but it's not cheaper. The base MSRP of 22,115 with manual transmission is about $4,300 more than the entry level sedan. But the hatch comes with more standard equipment, and when fully optioned like this one, comes in at 29,465. That includes lots of premium features, such as a heated steering wheel, heated front and rear seats, OnStar 4G LTE with top-of-the-line infotainment, including smartphone projection and Bose audio, wireless phone charging, auto high beams, and side blind zone alert, among many other goodies. The soft leather front seats are Volvo-like in their comfort, and the big windshield provides a commanding view. If you're sitting in the rear, Duck your head before getting in. These seats are elevated theater style for better visibility, but that encroaches on headroom. I already knew the Cruze was a really solid car, but this hatchback adds a sporty flair and versatility that elevates it for me. It's a car you truly look forward to driving because it feels spry with a light steering touch that's good at communicating the road. The gas pedal feels a little lazy, but when pushed hard, generates the turbo excitement you're looking for, though even more engine would be welcome. This excellent chassis could certainly handle it. This is the same powertrain found in the sedan, a direct injected take on the 1.4 liter turbo four, making 153 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque. The six-speed auto doesn't come with sport mode or paddle shifters, you can plus minus from the lever, but it needs a sportier program to keep up when you're driving for fun. The rear suspension in the Premier also takes a step up from the standard torsion beam to a Watts linkage for slightly more sophisticated ride and handling characteristics. Zero to 60 takes a reasonable 7.7 .7 seconds. The Michelin MXM4 tires are usually an excellent fit on performance touring cars. But during this snowy week, they proved to be unfit. And plus, they contributed to more understeer than desired. The EPA estimate of 31 mpg in combined driving is down 2 mpgs from the sedan. A stop-start system is standard. The RS appearance package includes the sporty body kit, fogs, and rear spoiler, giving it a hot hatch look. And yes, a stick shift diesel model is on the way, combining everything Americans fear in a car. The Cruze's biggest competitor is the Civic, also offered as a hatch. And hopefully Chevy will follow Honda's lead in offering a performance-oriented model because the Cruze is ready for more. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes. It starts with a jet black exterior and just keeps going. This is the new 2016 Chevy Impala Midnight Edition. When the Impala was reborn in 2013, it evolved into a sophisticated sedan showcasing the maturation of GM design and technology. 
It was a huge hit with me, and sales this year have nearly equaled those of the Toyota Avalon and Chrysler 300, combined. Now in its third model year, Chevy's Antelope goes dark with the available Midnight Edition Appearance Package. Priced at $1,195, this blacked out grouping can be added to LT and LTZ trims with the V6 engine. It includes the aforementioned jet black exterior, including body color mirrors, 19 inch aluminum wheels with black accents, black grille and surround, a front and rear black Chevrolet bow tie, jet black interior, sport pedals, and a black rear spoiler. It's very tastefully executed and gives this top trim 2 LTZ model a bit of brashness. After midnight, other upgrades for 2016 include Apple CarPlay and wireless charging capability. I've driven a few new models with CarPlay recently, and though it's still a work in progress, I love being able to interact with my text messages in a safer and less distracting manner. Chevy MyLink with navigation is a top-tier system in its own right, and being able to mirror some of my iPhone's features onto the big screen and control them via voice and touch is pretty cool. Ironically, the wireless charging won't work with the same iPhone without an aftermarket accessory. A couple of other big tech victories for the Impala is OnStar with a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot and the highly customizable and colorful information display. I've been reminded this week just how exceptionally well done the Impala is. It still feels fresh, drives like a dream, comes loaded with tech, and possesses head-turning style, particularly in this new Midnight Edition. This is the quintessential big American sedan conceived for a modern audience. My previous Impala tester was fitted with the optional 20-inch wheels, but this car rides much better on these 19-inch Goodyear Eagle high-performance all-seasons. It's not trying to impersonate a sports sedan. Rather, it's proud to deliver a very quiet, powerful experience with a silken ride quality, a perfect highway cruiser. At the same time, it's not uncoordinated, giving the driver a big car sense of connectedness. This 3.6 liter V6 and six speed auto are the epitome of powertrain smoothness. A zero to 60 time of six seconds demonstrates just how motivated this engine is, and it sounds good too. You pay for it in mileage though, which is rated at only 18 MPG City, 28 Highway. It's also a big car with a huge trunk, so it'll make friends with the out-of-town traveler. Although the rear seats are sized accordingly, the seat bottoms are short and flat and just not very comfortable. LTZ models are loaded, and my car adds on two big packages, the enhanced convenience and advanced technology for an as-tested price of $39,875. Highlight items include memory settings, a heated steering wheel, cooled seats, and an 11-speaker Bose surround sound system. All the latest safety systems are here too, including forward collision and side blind zone alert, to name just a couple. The Impala has a distinctive air of elegant style and feels oh so good from behind the wheel. It's a shining example of just how satisfying an American car can be. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes. For the vast majority of Americans, electric cars simply don't make sense, whether the issue is driving range, vehicle size, or financial. But the Chevy Volt is the most sensible solution for those galvanized by the prospects of electric driving without the range anxiety. Now in its second generation, the Volt conducts itself in an even more electrifying manner. Hybrids, plug-ins, electrics, fuel cells, range extenders. Is there any doubt as to why today's car shoppers are so confused by the myriad of choices? Most don't care nearly as much about how this stuff works as they are about the benefits, nor should they. What does it cost? Will it save me money? And will I like driving it? That's the bottom line approach here. And this new Volt gets a price cut of more than $1,000, saves another $150 per year in fuel costs compared with the previous model, and takes that next big step in refinement. It's a very likable car that also looks sleeker while retaining its signature Volt identity. You can view the Volt, as the EPA does, as a plug-in hybrid, using both electricity and gas for propulsion. GM calls the new 1.5-liter four-cylinder engine a range extender 
because in essence, the Volt is only driven by electric motors. Once the battery runs out of enough juice to power the car, the gas engine fires, and you continue to motor for up to 420 miles. At that point, you can either find a place to recharge the battery and or pull into a gas station, like a regular car. Of course, unless you can find a free charging station, and they do exist at grocery stores and the like, electricity also has an associated cost. So the EPA rates this vault at 106 MPGE, that's miles per gallon equivalent for electric driving, and 42 MPG once the initial EV driving is over. That's an increase of between 8 to 13 percent. This is thanks in large part to a number of innovations to the all-new Voltex system, including a lighter, smaller lithium-ion battery with greater storage capacity and a lighter, more efficient two-motor drive unit, providing a greater than 20 percent improvement in electric acceleration. On a cold 25 degree morning like this, the fully charged battery will deliver about 45 miles of pure EV driving. Now in perfect conditions, that number can be as high as 53. That's up from 38 on the previous model. On paper, that's how it works. But northerners will experience a bit more engine intervention when the temps are cold, say in the mid 30s and below. So a Volt owner in Southern California is going to get better mileage than one in New York. That's just the way of the EV world. But during this mostly mild week, the majority of my trips were accomplished without any gas, as 80% of Volt owners can already attest, getting around 1,000 miles between fill-ups. I don't have a 240 volt charger, so filling the car's battery takes about 13 hours. If you do, it only takes four and a half hours. You can monitor all of this through a smartphone app and via the green light on the dash. By the way, the illuminated charge port is an option I choose as it can be difficult to properly place the plug at night. And the portable charge cable now stows more conveniently in this cubby above the load floor. If you've never driven an electric vehicle before, you'll immediately fall in love with the quietness and effortless acceleration. And with the new two-motor system, this Volt is noticeably quicker than before. 294 pound-feet of torque gets you going immediately, enough to actually thrust you back into your seat. Meanwhile, the gas engine, best referred to here as the generator, nets better mileage once the battery is depleted and it no longer desires premium gas. Now, from a driving perspective, this Volt is more polished, with a stronger body structure leading to better ride quality. It's not that the previous Volt was poor, but this car appeals to all of the senses in a much more mature manner. Though the brake pedal has a lot of travel before stopping, the new system feels incredibly organic and incorporates a new regen button on the steering wheel that acts like a brake when descending hills to better recapture otherwise lost energy for the battery. The steering is sharp, you can feel the road, and though the fuel saver tires give up pretty easily, there's a joy to driving this car in a non-EV-like manner that's actually quite satisfying. The Volt is obviously most impressive and enjoyable when the engine's not on, some of the car's polish and mystique is lost once it is. The Volt is a compact and as such is pretty tight inside, particularly in these rear seats, which are borderline acceptable for taller adults. But you've got to be kidding me with the advertised five passenger seating. Cargo room is quite expansive with a huge hatch area and seats that fold flat and the front seats, though lacking power operation even on this top trim, are snug but comfortable. The cabin as a whole is a huge improvement over the previous car's rudimentary design. Quality, fit, and finish all go much farther, and the electronics are out of this world good, including Apple CarPlay, OnStar with a built-in 4G Wi-Fi connection, a highly customizable information display, and all kinds of electric car-specific goodies. Heated seats all around, remote start, a heated steering wheel, multiple USB ports, wireless charging capability, beautiful blue ambient lighting. It's exceptionally well done and thoroughly thought out. It can park itself, brake if you don't, and alert you to all kinds of potential dangers. And I'm beginning to love auto high beams. Pricing starts at $34,000, while this highly optioned, though not fully loaded, Volt Premier stickers for $40,225. 
These numbers are before you take a $7,500 federal tax deduction. Compared with the average new vehicle, the EPA estimates that the Volt will save you $3,250 in fuel costs alone over five years. The run of 2016 models is very limited, so it'll be the 2017 model year before the Volt's nationwide rollout. This is GM at its best, flexing its engineering muscle and showing that the company is ready for whatever the future of driving may hold. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes. If you're like me, you take advantage of opportunity charging when out in your electric car. You know, plugging in around town to top off the battery charge. And in many areas, those public charging stations are free to use. Well, wouldn't it be great if it also took less time? Well, that's exactly what the updated 2019 Chevy Volt is capable of. Available as a $750 option on Volt LT and standard on Volt Premier, is a new 7.2 kilowatt onboard charging module. That means when you're plugged into a public charger or your own 240 volt home charger, the Volt will fully juice up in two and a quarter hours as opposed to the previous car's four and a half hours. And yes, you can still use a standard household outlet for 13 hour overnight charging. The 2019 Volt can still travel about 53 miles on electric propulsion before the engine, or range extender as it is known, kicks in for a total driving range of 420 miles. Once that occurs, the Volt averages 42 miles per gallon. On average, Volt owners travel 1,100 miles between fill-ups with regular charging. Pretty cool. Other enhancements for 2019 include a heating system that doesn't engage the engine until it gets really cold, minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit, a regenerative braking system that is more effective when drivers let off the accelerator pedal, and improved driving feel and smoother operation when slowing. Inside, the new infotainment system now incorporates an energy app, providing drivers more information about their efficiencies. There's an available power driver seat, a Volt First, new seating patterns, a digital rear view camera, and a repositioned wireless charging pad. And taking a page from Nissan's playbook, the new tire fill alert sounds a horn when full tire pressure is achieved. Pricing for the Volt LT starts at $34,395 including destination, while the Volt Premier starts at about $39,000, both before the $7,500 federal tax credit and other potential local incentives. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes.